Good afternoon and welcome to um, another day with us at Sara TV. Today we have with us Nigerian foremost comedian MC Lively, who is known for making us laugh with his kids on Instagram, especially in the morning when you're going to work. You just on your phone and you can start laughing. It's great, nice to have you with us today. Great to be here. Such a pleasure. Mm. <clears throat> Thank you very much. You see my, do you see my English? <laughs> yeah, just so <like, laughs> <laughs> <also> you go. <laughs> Let me talk it again. Let me talk it again. Great to be here. Such a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> go on. Go ahead. Oh, so I personally, I grew, I grew up um, watching Babasu, young comedians, do their thing on the TV screen. All right. And I know you are here saving my time, been inspired by one or two of them. Mm -hmm. Before we go to that place, let's start by meeting you. Can we meet MC Lively? <laughs> this is me. Yeah, meet me. <laughs> so we would like to know who is MC Lively, what's his name, and well, my real name, is, name and uh... My name is Sunny Michael Amanesi. Um, I hail from Edo State. Was born and bred in Ileife Ocean State, Nigeria. Um, I'm a comedian by profession. I love comedy. I've loved it all my life. Um, I love to act. And um, I'm also a lawyer by training. That's it. <laughs> anyway, Auntie, you want to know, you ask question. Yeah, okay. So you said you grew up in Ife. In Ife, in yes. In Ife, definitely. And that's the cradle of um, civilization according to the Yoruba methodology. Mm -hmm. um, so what was it like growing up for you in Ife? And now coming down to Lagos to come and pursue your dream. How was it, you, what was it like for me? Growing up in Ife was, um, I think, the best thing that could ever happen to me because all I ever wanted to do was to go and see the world. Um, I grew up in a place where I knew that it was limited. I had not seen the way the world was. I had not seen... I'm kind of person that in our family, they didn't allow us to travel. So I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't have an experience of how the world looked. But it was, it was all I looked forward to. I always looked forward to me um, actually going to the world. And when I say the world, I mean where it happens, where where stuff happens, not only Nigeria, not only Lagos, but the world. That's always been a goal. That's always been a goal. So growing up on Ife was one of the most revealing things for me because it just helped me build myself. I kept building, I kept getting better. I, I, I was always concerned with improving myself. That's, that was always the important thing. That is still always the important thing to me as a person. So um, I guess I could say that the fact that I grew up in such a rural area made me have the greatest dreams I could ever have. Because if I didn't, probably I wouldn't have had as much ambition and aspiration as I do now. Now you said you're a lawyer, you studied law by... So what, what, at what point did that switch come for you to, to go into comedy? Or you, comedy has always been a part of you growing up? It wasn't a switch. I always loved comedy growing up. I always loved it. I was just never sure I could do it. I was just never sure that I could actually make people laugh. And um Studying law has little or no bearing to what I do now or what I was ever going to do. Story, for me, I wanted to study law because I wanted to meet new people. I wanted to be more exposed. And also because it was the best course in art classes then. I mean, you, you can't be in art class and someone will say they want to um, study a course. Law is the most prestigious course and of course it's the most, one of the most prestigious professions in the world. So I always wanted to go to school. But law for me was about the prestige, it was about the um, knowledge. I wanted to know more, that's why I studied law, not because I wanted to practice law. So what was it like for you in, in back then in OA in school, seeing young um, comedians doing their thing, and you yesterday carrying your book, reading and all <laughs> that. So how was it like for you at the for joining at the Okay, well, that's the most amazing thing. My career started really late, really, 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 really late. I was in 500 level before um, people even knew um, I was, I could do whatever it is that I do. I was in 500 level. Um, because like I said, I was trying to find myself. I, I knew I loved comedy so much. I knew I loved acting so much. But I wasn't exactly sure how to do it because 
then it was all about stand up comedy it was all about you going on stage and making people laugh and OAU used to be one of the most difficult places to do stand up comedy because if you are not funny in the first line if you are not funny in the first sentence you, that's the end that's the end of your career for life so there was always that fear that ah, what if they don't laugh what if they don't laugh I think that's why I didn't do it for a long time. Plus, I really wanted to come out with good grades. I really wanted to be... Um, whatever it is that I do, I try to do it to the best of my abilities. So I was quite focused on my books, not forgetting that I also am an entertainment person. So that time, when I go to Amphi, or I go to P Theatre, and I see people performing, I enjoyed it. I did not feel, um, I did not feel any sort of envy. I just enjoyed people's performances. Of course, I said it in my mind that I could do that. Whatever it is that guy is doing, I know I can do it. And I just kept thinking, when will my time come? When will my time come? When will I be able to actually get on stage and make people laugh? But mostly, it was it was. It was fear. There was a lot of fear before I started. There was it was too much. So how did you conquer this fear? I started. That's how I conquered the fear. Mm. That's so, how I, that's how I conquered it. Yeah, I started. So, I started emceeing. So I started with I started as an MC and I would make people laugh so much when I'm emceeing events that I'll now wonder, ha, ah, let me funny like that. Unfortunately, the first day I tried to do stand up, not even the first day, the first few times, like on four different occasions. <laughs> Koboko, nothing. <laughs> Nobody laugh. Nobody, not even my girlfriend inside the crowd. One of those uh, performers. <laughs> as I, I'm as I'm cracking the joke, my eye meet her high. She's looking at me like this. Go, go, go! It no work, it no work, it no work. Leave the stage, leave the stage, leave the stage. <laughs> so where is she now? <laughs> She's there. She is. <laughs> so it was it was very difficult. So um, my fear came to reality. The fear that what if I say something and people don't laugh. It came into reality eventually. And of course, even till now, there are still some times that you say some jokes and people will laugh. But it does not mean that you're not funny. And it does not mean that you don't have material that will make people laugh. It just, needs, it just means that you need to work more. And that's what I understood. I need to do more work. And that's what I did. So let's go to the um, your career proper. All thanks to Instagram that made you have fans that are all over the world that you can't you can't let you search so much fans all over the world so like for me I'd, I'd like to ask this personal question like if there was no instagram would you still have been a very popular comedian i would be a popular comedian yes maybe not as quickly as it happened but i would be a very popular person whether a comedian or not i've always known i was going, I was going to be popular i've always known i didn't know how because i didn't know how it was going to happen but I always, I always knew I was going to be popular. Because there's this popular belief that those that do mostly these Instagram skits, they kind of find it hard to transition it on the main stage when it's time for them to perform and all. That's like the popular belief among. And, and what was it like between the, those that do the Instagram skits and the, and the comedians that also perform on the stage? What's the relationship like between these two sections of the comedy industry? Okay, so I can only speak for myself. Definitely. I love stand-up. I've always loved it. And I know I can do stand-up. Um, but like I've always said, it takes years and years of practice to become a very good stand-up comedian. Um, so I can speak for myself, and I know that when I get on stage, um, I am myself. Whether it is on stage, or it is in front of um, a movie set, or it is when I'm doing my videos, I am myself. And as a person, my job in this world is to make people laugh. So there are times when um, it doesn't work and maybe people don't feel it, or maybe it's the situation that whatever it is. But I am myself, and I know that with constant work, um, with constant effort, I get better and better, and I become one of the, by the grace of God, I become one of the best stand-up comedians that the world has seen. That is, um, that is and has always been my goal. Now, about the question of Instagram comedians and stand-up comedians, people are different. There are people who can do stand-up very easily, and they can also act. People who are Instagram comedians, they're actors. They're actors who are doing 
comedy sketches. Just like we had the legends like Nkemo, Osta, Yeme, and Co. They just did movies. Now, um, in fact, what we are doing is, is even a lot uh, more difficult, especially people who had to do um, 15 second skits that time because the shorter the time you have to make people laugh, the more difficult it is to do. So, the actors, and there are some actors who can stand on stage and also make you laugh. So, it's not like every comedian can act, every stand up comedian. It's not like every stand-up comedian can act. At the same time, it's not like every person who is an actor or who does, who makes people laugh via comedy can stand up on stage. So it's about understanding um, the difference between both because they are two different things. Being in front of a camera and being, being on stage, they are two different things. There are some people who do it very easily. In fact, the people that started skits in Nigeria are the greatest stand-up comedians we've seen. People like um, Star, um, Bovi, um, basket mouth. They're the ones that started skits way back in 2013. Started yeah, three minutes, four yeah, minutes yeah, skits. Yeah. We used to watch. Then we looked at them. Then we, we had the likes of Frank Donga and Co. So it just shows a blend. There are people who can do stand up so well and can also act so, so well. There are other people who cannot um, act as well as they can do stand up. So it, it's, it's really uh, a different thing. Do you understand? There are various genres of comedy. Uh, and um, I think that's what most people don't understand. And that's why they usually classify people together, which should not be done. So what brought about the idea? I love, I love, what I really love about you is the way you merged your law profession to also talk about the unemployment level and the way Nigeria is as, 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 as a country. So what brought about the idea of you wearing your regalia in your law, white and black and okay. everything? What brought about the idea and what was your first breakthrough like? What will give you a full breakthrough? Well, like I said, I'm myself anyway, whether it is in front of a camera, whether it is on the stage, I am myself. Um, so it means that whatever stories that I tell is connected to who I am as a it's person. Original. So it's original. So it's not, it's, I, I, it's not like I'm trying to create something or um, I'm trying to, uh, I don't know. English is hard. <laughs> as much as I'm trying to be creative, the root is me as a person. It's all connected to me. And uh, the first big break I had, of course, like you said, was when I wore the white and black. So what happened was, I had already been doing skits. This was, this was um, mid-2017. Mm. I was already doing skits with Bro Bush. Mm. By the way, nobody knew us then. That time we used to promote um, our skits on Instagram. We we'll, we we'll do skits. We we'll do one thing or the other. But it wasn't it wasn't getting the desired effect. I, I wasn't feeling myself because I was doing like other people. I was doing skits like other people, and that's another thing. Um, I was copying people, so I was creating my own concept, but I was doing it in their style. Then sometime in August, I decided that I needed to be myself. I needed to be um a reflection of who i am in my comedy and as such i decided i needed to wear something that reflected of who i truly am i am a lawyer who does comedy so what's the best way to identify a lawyer white and black because when we were in school there we used to wear white and black all the time of course everybody knows the best way to identify a law student is white and black so that's why i started wearing white and black i was going to use the wig I was going to use my wig because that's actually a better way to recognize a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. But out of deference for the legal profession, um, every lawyer respects the legal profession. Every person who um, is called to the Nigerian bar, there's a requisite respect that you have to have. So you can't use, you can't use our regalia anyhow. She understand. You have, to respect it. you have to respect it. So that's why I used the um, white and black and just. I decided to be myself, basically. So, uh, the first skit that I did with white and black, I saw it got, it changed. People stopped the talking direction. about the things that happened and started talking about me. So it changed the narrative from um, what was happening in the skit to the person in the skit. So I realized that, oh, he was already working. He was the fourth 
fourth skit that I did in my right hand black that went viral. Fourth, mm -hmm. I think the fourth. That's where they asked, do you burn your certificate for um, $5 billion? Then it went viral. So I built on that. So being myself really helped me market myself to the public. So let's talk about your very, very, I, I, I want to use the word crazy because I'm, well, they're your very, very lovely partner, bro, Bush. Mm -hmm. So um, how did you, how, how, how did you guys meet or you've known each other from, how, how, how was it like the meeting then doing those skits together? Just tell us the story. We've known for years. We met in OAU. We've been friends since OAU. We, he was my junior in, in um, law by two years. And we just, we just vibed really. We never thought we were going to do anything together, but I always knew that he was a rebel like me. I like people who are rebels. I like people who, um, who are smart, intelligent. I, I, I used to mix a lot of people who, they know, they know Buko, but they just know that that law, they are not doing it. Mm. So I guess that was one of the things that really attracted me to him. I always knew that he's very smart, very intelligent, but he was, he was never going to become, practice. he was never going to practice law. I think that's what attracted him to me um, the most. And he's also an actor, very decent, very, very, very crazy actor. Very good, very, very good. So, so we've been friends for a long time. Then uh, early this year, uh, we decided to do some uh, what's it called now? Reinventing because I'm the kind of person that gets bored very easily. <laughs> I get bored of anything, anything. So if I'm doing something and I've been doing the same thing over and over, if I do the same thing over and over for one month, I'll get bored. Wow. I'll get very bored. So I just need to change. I'm the kind of person that always likes to infuse something new. So part of the something new that I wanted to do, that's how myself and Robu started doing skits. And it, it went... People really loved it. People loved the the combo, and we could sustain for a while. Of course, we are still going to come out with lots of um, crazy stuff. So let's go away from you for a bit, and let's talk about the Nigerian comedy industry as a whole. Do you think you know, now the Nigerian entertainment as a whole is like the major platform that is giving Nigeria a source of happiness and all? Now, if you now go a little bit down to the Nigerian comedy industry, you guys are also the backbone because you make people laugh, you put smiles on people's faces and all. So what would you say is, what is, is the Nigerian comedy, has it gotten to that top platform? Has it gotten to that um, level of, 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 of um, success or there's still more to be done? I know definitely you say there's still more to be done. Comedy? So like in what aspect are they, is there, are there still some lack uh, in this, the this, Nigerian comedy industry? That we, we like, where do I even carry this matter from? <laughs> anyway. Well, five years ago, if you wanted to laugh, if you wanted someone to make you laugh, you go to a show. Yeah. Twenty nineteen. If you want to laugh, you go to someone's page. I think that's the difference. Yeah, definitely. So there's been a lot of growth in the Nigerian comedy industry, but people are failing to realize that um, they need to grow together. That is the um, online version and the um, mainstream. So there needs to be a connection between the online and the mainstream. Um, we've had comedians in Nigeria have done, who have done sensationally well. People who have... I mean, come on. In, in, in early 2000s, you could barely even point at a comedian. You could barely point at one or two comedians, um, except the likes of Alibaba uh, and, and many of TA... Frank Edo, you know Frank Edo is a comedian. By the way, you know he's a comedian. Wow, he started as a comedian. No. Is he a comedian or not, Frank Edo? I don't know him as a comedian. I know him as an host. Does he make, who is a comedian? People that make someone that make people laugh. Professionally. Yeah, yeah. Does he make you laugh? He does. Does he need to go on stage and say, before he's... Okay, so that's your definition of a comedian. Who is a comedian? Someone that makes people laugh. So Wait, like <laughs> who is a comedian? Someone that makes people laugh. Is he someone that stands up on stage to make you... That's one of the definitions, but is that the only definition? No. no. Exactly. So I think that most people who um, are the pioneers, they've done sensationally well. But it's not left to us now, um, people who are new in the industry, to also create something that, that is very sustainable. Um, it's, it's so healthy that we have loads and loads of um, 
shows every year. Every year in Nigeria, especially in Lagos, we have countless amounts of, of um, shows. It, it didn't used to be like that. That's, that's, that's growth. That's a great level of growth. Do you understand? But I think there's still a lot more to be done. There's still a lot more to be done. We, we, we need to now make comedy shows look like actual comedy shows and not concerts. There's, there's little distinction now between a comedy show and a concert. You know what I mean by concert? Yeah, because the musicians come to perform. Not necessarily because musicians come to perform. There are comedy shows who are still great and musicians come to perform. But comedy shows look like rallies nowadays. I, I understand the fact that um, people need to make money. But I think comedy proper proper is is one that should be done in theaters and and stuff. And we've we've turned it around. We've turned it around, and there's little or no attention that is paid to um, the craft anymore. People are more interested in money. I think. Mm, just to I think stage. people are more interested in money than the craft. So I think there needs to be a lot more love for the craft now. Mm. Not only even stand up, even people who do um, stuff online. Nowadays, people just want to get the comments. People are not even trying to create something that would last long. Mm. I don't know if you understand. Me. I do. So I think we, we have a lot to do. We have a lot of work to do. Well, cool. But the, the industry has really grown. And um, um, of course, it's, it's nowhere close to the music industry. But I don't think it's even a competition with the music industry. Music would always do better than comedy. Are you for real? <laughs> it's, it, see, anybody can listen to music. It is easy to listen to music. Mm. It is too easy. Just press play. It is too easy to listen to music, but you need a conscious effort to actually go and watch someone make you laugh. I'm glad to hear that from you, being that you're a comedian and you're saying that. Music is always, the music industry is always going to be bigger. That's the simple truth. Go, go and check all over the world. Whether it's, um, it's even Hollywood is not as big as, as music. Do you understand what I'm saying? It would always be bigger. No matter how big the movie or the um, acting or comedy industry is, I think, it's my opinion though, I don't know. Yeah, it's, you're it's right. You're like, yeah, definitely right. But, but I think know. music would always be So it shouldn't be a competition. Mm. And that's another thing that we have. We have a serious problem in Nigeria. Mm. <laughs> Everybody's competing. Mm. Ah, it's a serious problem. Mm. It's a very serious problem. Things that could happen a lot quickly if we pull efforts together. Everybody wants to do it separately. I think that's another problem that even the comedy industry has. Everybody's beefy. Talking about the problem that the comedy industry has, let's come down to copyright. You see a lot of um, comedians copying jokes. You see, so a comedian will come and say, I'm going to have this joke. The other person will come and say, I'm going to have this joke. So, what do, you, what, do you, what do you really think is the problem with this copyright of content, of people's content? And how do you think the, the problem can be solved, talking about copyrights? I don't know. I think that's a problem that will last for a very long time, whether one person is the owner of joke or not the owner of joke. Mm. In places that are even more advanced, people are still stealing jokes. How much mm. more Nigeria that nothing is organized? So, I, I, however, I think even if they steal your jokes, like I said, like I say again, it's my opinion. <laughs> I don't want problem because <laughs> we're in Nigeria. Like I say again, it's my opinion. I think people always have unique styles of telling their jokes, such that um, it's, it's, it's wrong to steal a joke. It's yeah. very wrong to steal a joke. But people who don't steal, people who create their own content, yeah, I think my... they would always, they would always they would always pull through, regardless of whether one person steals one of your jokes or not. But, except I didn't get the question. Yeah, you got the question right. You get the question. But I feel like if you perform someone's joke, there's not, it makes time you're just giving credit to the person. That, okay, well, this is so, this. Why should you even perform someone's joke in the first place? But if it's a joke, if it's, it's maybe you are making a reference to it. Sometimes I make reference to my friends. Sometimes I'm talking to them like, oh, like Lassisi says, I make reference to my friends. Do you understand? Mm. It's different. Um, okay, I think that's what that's what you're saying now. You need to pay uh, homage to whoever you stole. No, no, people just give credit like, okay, oh, this is not my. This is not my joke. That kind of. 
because I was at, at I was at um, a conference and some copyright and stuff like that. It's, it, there's not really much issue with copyright. It's not much to give the person money. It's just a matter of just saying credit. Is, but, well, I think you are the one that will tell Nigerian <laughs> community that they should give credit to <laughs> me. I try as much as I can to be um, very natural when I'm telling jokes. I try to be very spontaneous and very original. Okay, now, how do you feel when you, um, you tell you crack a joke and people are, you put smiles on people's faces and you receive messages from people that, oh, I was once depressed and your comedy and your joke got me out of the, the depression. How do you feel? You know, now the world is crazy, people are committing suicide. Hmm. You no. Know. It's, it's, it's unbelievable what's happening in the world today, but it has always been the thing that gave me the greatest joy in the world. If Making people laugh makes me happy. It makes me happy. I could literally have no money in my account and um, I'll go for a performance. And the fact that people just laughed, that gives me the, the greatest joy in the world. That's, that's what I live for. That's what I live for. So that's what gives me the greatest joy in the world, making people happy, making people laugh. That's it's that simple. So well, let's talk about the unemployment in Nigeria. Hmm. If we start to talk about Nigeria's matter, I will not finish you. <laughs> no, like, so how do you feel seeing a lot of youth with talents and not having jobs to do? And like, how do you feel? What do you think the I government think the, can do the, about the whole The situation? problem is we are waiting for the government to do and the government wouldn't do anything. So we need to figure out a way that we can survive. Well, it's what we've been doing for long. We've been trying to survive without the government. government. definitely. So we have to continue doing that. However, we need to make the government more responsible. I don't know how we are going to do it. But the truth is, that's why it's government. The government would affect every individual's life as long as you live in this country. No matter who you are, no matter how rich you are, the government would affect you one way or the other. And we know it, that they are not affecting us positively. So <laughs> we need to find a way to actually make them accountable. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we can, we can solve whatever problem it is. Because it's, it's hurtful. When we were growing up, the pathway to success was go to school, study, you get a job, and uh, you're you set family. up for life. Yeah. Things have so changed. Things have so, 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 so changed drastically. Nowadays, you get a job and they can't even pay you to fend for yourself, let alone the family who have spent years and years sending you to school. So things have changed and we need to fix a lot of things. It's not just getting a job. You can get a job in this country. They'll pay you 200,000 200, a, a month and you'll not be able to do anything tangible with it. Mm. Because of the way things have gotten really, really bad in the country. So... I think as, as Nigerians, we need to be more patriotic. We are not, are not patriotic as a country. People don't, even, people don't even sing the national anthem anymore. Go and check it. If you are playing national friend, national... And when you were growing up, can they be playing match and you will see players, none of them, they are not shouting. No, <laughs> think only, about it. They're always singing at the top of their voice. Do you understand? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't even sing... Think about it. When last did you sing the national... When last did you say the Nigerian pledge? Many of us don't even... Want to be Nigerians anymore? I, I think one of the major things we need to do is, is fix our patriotism. Maybe then we'll be willing to die for Nigeria because the truth is, as it stands now, if something drastic does not happen, if we are not willing to um, take a bullet for, the, I'm not saying I want to take bullet to, before you go and cut me. I say we, we. So you mean that maybe. All of us now gather and say, ah, want to take bullet here. I will join and say, ah, let me to take bullet. So on the last and final note, uh, the usual question of what would you say to a young man or a young guy or a young lady trying to do skits, trying to be on the, trying to go viral with our content? What would you say to such? Don't try to go viral. Mm, why? Why would you be trying to go viral? Do what you know how to do. Do the best and every other thing follows. Everybody's trying to go viral. That's why most people don't even 
put out great content anymore. They put out content that can go viral. So there's a difference between putting out content that can go viral and content that is good. Not all good content, not all great content go viral. Yes or no? Yes. Not all great content go viral. Mm. But, but content that go viral, um, there is a very high tendency that content is great. Mm. Do you understand? So if you are chasing virality of your of your mm -hmm. content, you would almost neglect the quality. quality. However, when you're chasing that the quality is really good, one way or the other, yeah, your virality will come. Definitely. Definitely. So people need to concentrate on themselves. People need to concentrate on on building, on actually getting better, actually creating a craft. They need to love the craft more than they love the attention that comes with the craft. Most people prefer yeah. the attention that comes to the craft, the money that comes to the craft, than the actual craft. I think um, that should be fixed. Oh, talking about money, how was, you, how was it like getting your first paycheck? And <laughs> well, it feels good. This is the truth. When you do something that you love to do and people pay you for it, it feels good. This, that's the simple truth. And I'm not saying that one shouldn't be concerned about money. I'm not saying that money is not important. Oh my God. Money is very, 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 very important. But what is more important than money is the content that you're putting out, the quality of the content you're putting out. Because this is the truth. As long as your content is great, as long as your quality is great, money would always come. That's the simple truth. With where there's value, where there's value, money comes. So, of course, it felt great getting my first paycheck. Do you mind what, like, how much? <laughs> no, no, I'm not telling you. But what felt greater was the fact that I understood that I was going to get a lot of paychecks in my life. After that, paycheck. yes, that's what felt greater. It, every time I get paid for doing something, the feeling is not ah they don't pay me. No, the feeling is oh wonderful. If I can get paid for this, imagine what more I can do and how much more I can make. That's it. So it's a great time speaking with you and then thank you. From you, thank you.